Hey there, Central Ohio, and thanks for watching 10 TV Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons with your latest edition of the 10 Weather Impact Show. We are still in a winter pattern here across central Ohio, but the temperatures much improved from where we were earlier in this week, though we still have some cold air on the way, just not as bitterly cold as what we started this week off with. Today, though, also tracking a little bit of snow. Snow starts after 4 o'clock today. Could pick up a quick dusting, some minor accumulation, and then again some more cold temperatures as we head into your Friday. When it comes to the snow that we have seen across the country this week, it's been really kind of a disparaging difference between north and south. A lot of places that don't usually get snow picked up a ton of snow from that winter storm that came across the southern states earlier this week. We'll have more on that later in the show, but that has left snowpack all the way from Texas down along the Gulf Coast to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Kind of wild to see that down there. In fact, places in Florida with more snow on the ground than us here in Ohio. That's not to say that we haven't been seeing our snow. In Columbus, we're actually above where we should be for this time of the year. 11.6 inches of snow this January. Normal is about 6.7. And again, we could add to that some as we head toward later today. Another thing to talk about with all the cold air in place is going to be some of the safety concerns out there across the region. Yesterday, observed low temperature, negative three, coldest of the winter so far here in central Ohio. And that means we've seen some well, local areas of water, ponds, rivers, the like freezing over with ice. But it's important to note, even though it's been very, very cold, we really haven't seen uh, the kind of prolonged cold air that's going to result in safe ice across the region. So I wanted to go ahead and touch on the ice safety real quick. Uh, keep off the ice. Anything two inches or less, that is not going to be safe ice to be out on. If you're looking to do something like ice fishing, you need at least four inches of ice to do that safely. Snowmobiles, ATVs, you're going to need half a foot before that becomes safe. And if you're taking a car out on water, you need about a foot of ice for that to be safe. Bigger trucks, you need even more over a foot for that to become a safe activity. Again, we just haven't seen that kind of ice build up across the region, so I expect most of the ice around central Ohio to be in a dangerous state. So again, it's best just to avoid it. Now let's talk about the snow that's heading our way for this afternoon. You see the cloud cover out there throughout the day today. As we get toward 3, 4 o'clock, that's when the snow shower chances start to pick up across central Ohio. Scattered snow showers come in for the evening commute. You may come across a little bit of slow travel as a result of that snow pushing through. Scattered snow continues into the evening, eventually coming to an end as we head into tomorrow. Taking a look at snowfall that comes along with this again, not picking up a ton, but the dusting to a half inch will be our new fresh snowfall added on top of what's already sitting on the ground out there. Of course, we haven't really melted anything this week as the temperatures plunged early on. Let's take a further look at the forecast as we head toward the weekend. Friday, no real concerns, high pressure coming across the region, but as we get into the weekend, we are watching a low pressure system up to the north. Most of the snow associated with this should stay off to the north, but we'll have to watch Saturday and Sunday, see if we do get a little bit of precipitation here in central Ohio. The long term trends out there, they are for more at least near normal possibly a little below in Ohio. We start to see some of that warmer air creep in across southern states as we head into the start of February. Of course, again, when you're near normal, you could end up either side of that coin. What we are still looking at, of course, that La Nina winter uh, above average precipitation as we continue into the first week of February. Of course, some of that could come as rain, but if we're on the cold side, we could add even more snow on top of what we've seen so far this year. Here's your 10 weather impact seven day forecast. It is going to be a cold Friday out there after we get past that snow today. You wake up temperatures hanging around 12. It'll be 23 in the afternoon. Wind chills still a factor out there today, but not as much as it has been. We get toward the evening hours tonight about four or five o'clock. Wind chills will be down about say seven degrees from the air temperatures feeling like low 20s in Columbus will start to feel like the teens uh, not long after four o'clock this evening. As we head into the weekend again, we'll keep an eye on that system up to the north overall, though we are starting to see a bit of a warm up into the forecast 
forecast. We climb those temperatures into the 30s. Saturday and Sunday will be into the upper 30s by next weekend. There's some hope there at the end of the forecast. We were talking about that trend with a little bit of warmer air working into Ohio. We could even be in the 40s by next Wednesday. Of course, we'll have to keep a close eye on that as we head further into the forecast. Of course, it's still been a pretty cold one here, especially this week uh, in central Ohio and many kids that were at home uh, during some of the school closures early this week. It's possible that some of them face some dangerous cold out outside while trying to take in a little bit of playtime. If you or your kids have been out anytime in the past few days and you do start to feel pain, know that it's a problem. If your skin hurts, if it's red, pale, blue, or you feel numbness or muscle stiffness, there's also a solution. So, you know, it, it, it being painful and red, um, you just want to get some warm water and kind of soak your hands or your feet uh, in the warm water and warm things back up. Um, if it looks more pale or it turns a darker color or blue, um, or if it's just numb and you're not feeling much there, then you do want to get help because that's going to be a more severe uh, mm -hmm. cold injury. So here's the recap. Remove all wet clothing, put on dry layers, and use warm, not hot water to heat the skin back up. And a pro tip, don't rub cold areas. could make the skin feel worse. And of course, there's no need to feel guilty about spending that time inside this time of year. Speaking of better dressing, if you are out in the elements, our Consumer 10 reporter Clay Gordon has some tips for that. If you need to head outside this winter, here are some tips for how to dress in the cold. Normally, in an Ohio winter, we'd wear a couple layers and some gloves. But for extreme cold, it's best to keep your face covered and wear waterproof shoes and a hood or hat. If you can, wear multiple layers underneath your coat. And when you're inside, if you need more heat to keep warm, we've got some safety tips on when to use a space heater. First. Put it on a level surface so it can't be knocked over. Second, if you can, buy a heater with safety features like a tip over fail safe. And third, keep kids and pets away from the space heater. Make sure to plug it in directly to a wall and not into an extension cord. Thanks to Clay for those tips. And of course, electricity this time of year, that's key to staying warm. But yesterday we reported thousands of AEP customers ended up losing that power, spending hours in the cold but we didn't know why. Today, we do. The outage left traffic lights in homes in Northwest Columbus in the dark and without any heat crews work to get that power back on. Today, we pressed, our, we pressed AEP for answers about what went wrong. They did say a breaker opened that was protecting part of the power grid. They had to restore power bit by bit to avoid a bigger problem. This does take a while when it's extreme weather like this because of what we call cold load pickup. Uh, so if you go restore all 16,000 customers at once, you, you, you possibly could overload the system and cause a, a, a situation, right? A failed equipment or something like that. Uh, so our team methodically uh, would bring customers on, watch the loading, monitor it, uh, making sure we're protecting the grid and make sure we restore all those customers as quickly and safely as possible. And AEP said his power grid did work exactly as it was supposed to during that outage earlier this week. And speaking of staying warm in this cold weather, an apartment complex in southeast Columbus was on the city's radar because of a lack of heat in some of its units. It's called Edgewater Landing and is located off Refugee Road. People were temporarily relocated until the issue could be fixed. 10TV's Carly Dion shares what the city is doing to help. If you take a closer look at some of the apartment buildings at Edgewater Landing, you'll see these notices posted on the door, stating a Columbus code officer has inspected the unit and there's currently no heat. According to Columbus's Department of Building and Zoning Services, the boiler system connected to 176 units stopped working last week, meaning there was no heat. The Department of Development says 49 of those units were occupied and they were able to place 34 of those families temporarily in hotels through their vacant tenant services program last Thursday. Eight households decided to stay with friends or family. Now, management at the property is working to get the boiler system fixed and some units are just starting to regain heat. City Attorney Zach Klein's office says this property is on their radar and they just filed a complaint following the lack of heat at the property, declaring it a public nuisance. 
The complaint is asking the property owner to provide a written plan to the court within 30 days to fully rehabilitate the property. And new today, the city filed a lawsuit after that property again failed to provide heat to residents. And continuing with our cold weather news, Meals on Wheels is back in service in Licking County. Yesterday, the nonprofit canceled the services because of the extreme cold. They usually deliver 1,000 meals a day, but the executive director tells us they didn't think it was safe for their volunteers to be getting in and out of the cars all day. So we started calling and checking in on clients, making sure that they, first of all, were warm and safe, um, and second of all, that they had enough food to get them through the week. And for the most part, they did. We had a couple people that we did decide to go out and still deliver meals to them today. And with all this cold and wintry weather, we have received lots of questions asking whether or not the salt that's on the roads can damage your car. We've certainly seen a lot of it over the past few days to keep the roads from freezing. So here's what Ariane Detail can verify. When it's time to drive in snowy and icy conditions, it can be hard to avoid getting salt residue on your car. Verify viewer Valentine reached out to ask if road salt can damage vehicles. So Valentine, let's verify using these sources. Progressive Insurance Company says road salt can cause corrosion damage to vehicles, including visible paint damage, adding that salt damages cars mostly because it reacts chemically with water and air to speed up the oxidation process that causes rust. According to AAA, car rust caused by road salt costs Americans $3 billion every year. Nationwide Insurance Company says doors, fenders, hoods, and tailgates are most vulnerable to rust because they retain a lot of moisture. Endurance Warranty says road salt can also damage your car's brakes and battery because these systems consist of metal components that are more susceptible to rust. So we can verify, yes, road salt can damage cars. To avoid salt damage, Progressive says, frequently wash your car, including the undercarriage, and make sure it's completely dry when you finish to avoid the water freezing. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Detail. And remember, if you have something you want our National Verify team to look at, you can always email us your questions, verify at 10tv.com. And now to the latest on our southern winter storm we had this week. We talked a little bit about that snowpack that came down earlier in the show, a major storm bringing extreme weather and bitter cold, record-breaking snowfall, parts of the Gulf Coast and deep south. All right now it's being blamed for at least 10 deaths. The storm has impacted 1,500 miles of the Deep South while also wreaking havoc on road and air travel. Cheryl Hubbard has more on how the southeastern U.S. is gripping with the effects of this major winter storm that blanketed the region. The same storm that transformed over 1,500 miles of the Deep South from the Texas Gulf Coast to the Atlantic coast of the Carolinas into a whimsical winter wonderland. This is really amazing. I mean, I was not, I was not expecting it, this much snow. This is really amazing. Is the same storm that's causing widespread closures, travel disruptions, and thousands of people stranded. Historic amounts of snow fell across the Gulf Coast Tuesday into Wednesday, with totals reaching eight inches or more in parts of Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama. Several locations breaking all-time snowfall records. In Mobile, Alabama, a day after record snowfall, the roof of its Civic Center, a building in the demolition process, collapsed. And the negative impacts may not be over. Please stay off the roadways, stay off the overpasses. Many crews around the country worked on clearing the snow Wednesday, but many cities are still begging residents to avoid driving. They're going to be driving on an ice rink. The impending danger? The sun melting snow that then refreezes, increasing the danger on roadways. I'm Sherelle Hubbard reporting. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. First from that storm yesterday, a man seen skiing down Bourbon Street in New Orleans historic French Quarter. I don't think this is an image anyone had on their 2025 bingo card or really any other year. You can go back and check the records, but you definitely got enough snow in parts of the south to break out some of that winter gear. And that is an image that I don't think anyone's going to soon forget. In an area a little bit more accustomed to some cold weather, a lake freighter was actually stuck in the ice on Lake Erie. 
shoreline near the Buffalo River. The vessel, um, which was returning to Michigan after completing a routine delivery of rock salt, became immobilized by thick ice, which the U.S. Coast Guard said is commonplace this time of the year amid frigid temperatures. The incident happened on Wednesday around noon. Another ship left Erie just before them at 8 a.m. Thursday to assist. As estimated, the arrival time in Buffalo of 2 p.m. That ship will be tasked to break ice around uh, the stuck vessel in an attempt to free it. The Coast Guard said Thursday morning that there are no concerns regarding safety of the crew. The ship has enough fuel, provisions, and electricity to stay in good condition. Of course, uh, some amazing photos there as well. And amid soaring temperatures in other parts of the world, take a break from the winter weather. It's 40 degrees Celsius temperatures or 105 Fahrenheit Wednesday in Brazil. Animals at Rio de Janeiro's um, the park zoo were treated to frozen delicacies to help them beat this heat wave. Ice pops were served to bears, jaguars, and monkeys to ensure thermal comfort and promote their well-being. Give you some warm thoughts there too and our cold weather show. Now, of course, this is it for this version of the 10 Weather Impact Show. But coming up later tonight at 6 o'clock, Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz will be here to talk about the latest on our snow that will be moving through for this evening commute. And, of course, get you ready for the weekend as well. Until then, you can catch more news and weather online at 10tv.com. Have a great afternoon.